Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is about makeup do's and don'ts. So without any further ado, let's quickly begin. Now my right side is going to be makeup do's which you have to do when you apply makeup and my left side is what you have to avoid doing when you apply your makeup. Now the first thing I'm using is the Pond's Super Light Gel Moisturizer to prep my skin. I love this moisturizer for so many reasons. It's non-greasy, it's super lightweight and it quickly gets absorbed into your skin. So now on my right side I've applied a moisturizer whereas on my left side I won't be applying one and this is a common mistake done by a lot of them. When you apply your foundation or concealer without prepping your skin you'll see what happens. Next I'll be using the L'Oreal Youth Coat Serum on my right side. This is again to hydrate my skin. Now what happens if you apply a face serum? So firstly your makeup would last longer secondly your makeup won't crease and it won't look cakey at all next i'm using the nika prep me up primer on my right side to ensure smooth application of my foundation since i've already prepped my skin with a moisturizer and a face serum i am going to apply my primer only in areas where my foundation is most likely to crease for foundation, I'm using the Nika Skin Genius Foundation in the shade Warm Sand and I'm only going to apply it in dots. I'm not going overboard with the foundation. Start by using very little foundation and if you feel at any point that you need some more coverage, you can build it up later. Now on my left side, I'm directly applying my foundation and I'm going overboard with the foundation. I've literally seen so many of them do this they don't uh, prep their skin and they just apply foundation directly which you aren't supposed to do now how you blend your foundation is very important so i've taken a damp beauty blender and on my right side i'm just dabbing it also please don't forget to wash your beauty blenders every other time you use it now on my left side i am going to be dragging the beauty blender oh god this is such a mess it it please don't do that don't drag your beauty blender if you blend your foundation like this i kid you not you will find your foundation creasing very very quickly next for concealer i'm using my all-time favorite ellie girl pro conceal in the shade pure beige now honestly speaking there is no correct way of applying a concealer but there are some youtubers out there who ask you to apply it in a triangular shape some ask you to apply it this way, some ask you to apply it in dots and so many other ways. But trust me, I have applied it in every way possible. And I have finally come to a conclusion that this technique is the best that I have come across. Because firstly, this way you're not applying too much concealer under your eyes. And secondly, your eyes look lifted. Now for my don'ts, I'm applying too much of concealer and that is what a lot of them do. In order to conceal their under eyes or dark circles, they apply a lot of concealer and that is how your makeup ends up looking cakey. Now again for my concealer, I'm just dragging my beauty blender and blending the concealer. Your under eye area is very delicate, so every time you rub your beauty blender, you're going to damage your skin. Next, I'm using the Maybelline Fit Me Compact in the shade 220. And it is very important that you dust off the excess product and then set your under eyes and your eyelids. Why is it important to set your concealer and foundation with a compact or a loose powder? Because this way your foundation or concealer won't crease. And in case you begin to perspire, your concealer and foundation will stay intact. And on my left side, I'm not going to dust off the excess product. I'm just going to straight away apply it on my face. So when you use foundation on your face, your skin remains kind of moist. So if you use excess amount of compact or loose powder on your face, it's going to look as if you've applied too much makeup and then your makeup is going to look dry and cakey eventually. Next for blush, I'm going to use the So Cheeky palette by LA Colors. And on my right side, I'm going to use this neutral nude and pink color. Again, don't forget to dust off the excess product. You have to start applying the blush from the apples of your cheek till the hollows of your cheek. This way your face is going to look nice and flushed and your makeup is going to look flawless. Don't go above your cheekbones. 
because then that's going to interfere with your concealer just stick to your cheekbones and your hollows of the cheek now on my left side i'm using the light pink shade and i am not going to dust off the excess product i just feel like doing it but i can't and i'm focusing it mainly on the apples of my cheek excessive application of the blush on your cheeks will simply diffuse the look of too much cheek color and that will look very gaudy next i'm using highlighter from the same so cheeky palette and i'm going in with the golden highlighter again dusting off the excess product now most of them don't know but a highlighter is supposed to be applied in a c shape so you start applying the highlighter not on your cheeks but on your cheekbones then to your temples and then above your eyebrows that is how you do it so it's like in a c shape now why is it applied in a c shape is because when you go out in the sunlight or when your face is exposed to any sort of light your face will get an elegant natural and subtle glow and if it's just applied on the cheekbones um only that area of your cheeks will glow it won't look natural and here you can see how i've gotten that natural glow by applying it in a c shape now for my left side i'm applying the highlighter on my cheeks which i've seen so many people doing this is not the right way of applying a highlighter i mean you can but you're going to see how it pops up and then how it looks very artificial it actually looks like you have applied a highlighter whereas on my right side it looks very natural absolutely natural on my right side i'm going to dust off the excess product and i'm going to apply very little highlighter on the bridge of my nose and on the tip of my nose and on my left side i'm going to apply the highlighter above my chin which you are not supposed to do is supposed to apply it at the very tip of your chin and same goes with your cupid's bow you're supposed to apply it on your cupid's bow that is exactly in the center and not even above your upper lip This is usually how I apply my highlighter on my cupid's bow using my little finger because it's easier to apply it this way than using a brush. Next for eyebrows I'm using the Etude House drawing eyebrow pencil. Trust me, this eyebrow pencil is so easy to work with. Now, on my right side I am going very light-handedly on my eyebrows and not going in with a heavy hand. Also, I'm not keeping the pencil flat. I'm just keeping it at an angle. so that it's easier for me to shape my eyebrows now another tip never never purchase an eyebrow pencil that is dark in color don't purchase a pencil that is black because that is going to make your eyebrows look fake unless you naturally have very dark eyebrows like how men usually have very dark thick eyebrows unless you naturally have that it's fine but it's always better to use a pencil that is just one shade lighter than your eyebrow color or maybe which is kind of mm, similar to your eyebrow color but not darker than your original color draw a very light border on the thicker part of your eyebrow now on my left side i'm going to use the pencil very heavy handedly i'm going to draw a very thick border Now here you'll see me drawing a very dark outline on the thicker side of my eyebrows and you can see it for yourself which side looks better. Next I'm using the contour by Sugar Cosmetics in the shade Woody Wonder. When applying a contour, make sure to use an angular brush. Start by applying it from the hollows of your cheek and then end it by applying it a little lower than the apples of your cheek. A contour and a bronzer are two different things. People always mistake a contour for a bronzer and vice versa. So I'll tell you, a bronzer is just to add that warmth to your skin. It gives you a sun-kissed effect. Whereas a contour on the other hand sharpens your facial features and adds dimension to your face. Now on my left side, without dusting off the excess product, I'm directly going to apply the contour much below the apples of my cheeks. Now as you can see I've applied too much of the product on my cheeks and when you do that that is when you apply a lot of product it looks like a fake tan so it does not look really smooth it does not look clean but it looks very fake and that is what you have to avoid doing so when you're dealing with a bronzer make sure to go light handedly first and then you can build it up later if you want to Next I'm using the sugar kajal on my upper waterline 
Now this is a great hack if you want to achieve a natural eyeliner look. Now using the same kajal, draw an eyeliner by sticking very close to the lash line. I'm keeping it very simple and I'm not drawing a winged liner. I'm using this sponge eyeshadow applicator and I'm just going to smudge the eyeliner that I have drawn. You can even use your little finger and smudge it but this works best. This technique is going to change your eyeliner game, trust me on this. It looks so beautiful and so subtle and when you apply an eyeliner, it kind of makes your eyes uh, look a little droopy. But if you do it this way, your eyes look even wider and your eyes get like a little smoky look. Now for my don'ts, I'm going to draw a very thick eyeliner and you will see the difference. I told you that your eyes would look a little droopy and you'll see how. Next, for the mascara, I'm using the Face Shop Mascara. For my do's, what I'm doing is I'm removing the excess product that is there on the tip of the wand. What happens if you don't remove the excess amount of product from the tip is that when you apply it on your eyelashes, your eyelashes are going to look clumpy. For your lower lashes, you're not supposed to use too much product, which is why I'm not going to dip the wand in the mascara again. For my don'ts, I'm using the mascara without wiping off any excess product from the wand. You will already notice that my lower lashes look like the lashes of Annabelle. Next, I'm using the Sugar Grand Finale Setting Mist only on the right side of my face and I'm not going to set my other half. Let this dry for a few seconds and then you're good to go. Next for lipstick, I'm using my favourite Huda Beauty lipstick in the shade Graduation Day. How gorgeous is this shade? Now on the right side, I'm sticking close to my lip line and I'm not overdoing or overlining my lips. Now here you'll see me dabbing the lipstick on my lips. So firstly, don't drag the lipstick or don't rub it on your lips. Make sure to dab it first so that your lips are pigmented with the lipstick and then very light handedly apply it on your lips. And on the other side, I am overlining my lips as you can see with the lipstick and not with a lip liner. And I have seen so many of them do this mistake. It looks bad and it also looks fake. So if you really want to outline your lip, use a lip liner instead of a lipstick. Just see the difference in my lips from this angle and from that. Now this side is my don'ts and you can see how textured and cakey my skin looks here. And this is my do's where the makeup looks so flawless with no texture whatsoever. Everything from the eyebrows to the lips looks so flawless here. I hope this video was helpful for you. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.